What's going on everybody? Sharpie360 here. And if you're new to Stranded Deep and are having trouble navigating like I was, then I have a couple of tips to speedrun you to become a master navigator. What took me weeks in game to figure out will now only take you seconds, but before we get started make sure to like and subscribe because I have a 100 days survived video in the works and you won't want to miss that. Alright, let's get started. So you made it to your first island and you got a camp set up and you got all the basic necessities figured out. Fire, shelter, and water. And now it's time to branch out to find some more materials on different islands and possible wrecks that we might come across. And it might be fine to get to an island that you can see in the distance, but there's a couple of things that'll get get you caught up if you're not careful, and I'm going to go through those. Mainly being that it's super easy to get lost out there, especially when you get out of line of sight from your initial starting point. So there's a couple tips that you can keep in mind that will help you navigate these uncharted waters. The first being that the ocean current always flows to the south. So right here you can see it easily enough that the water is all kind of flowing in this direction and that would be south. And if you want more confirmation you can take an object or an item that's buoyant like this raft. Put this in the water. And then anything buoyant will just start to drift if it's not tied down like that, so... So yeah, you can see that it just starts to drift like that immediately. And it's heading south. And I know that because I can confirm it, because inside the raft storage, the game gives you a compass. So you can pull the compass out, and there you go. So south is this way. And if you look at the raft, that's sort of drifting in uh, this direction. Slowly but surely. So yeah, drifting south. Whoa. For the second tip, in addition to the current going south, you can also use the sun and the moon cycle to kind of determine because it will rise in the east and set in the west, right? So if you pay enough attention and wait long enough, you can see kind of the trajectory of it, or you can make a sundial or use one of these trees as a sundial. And that will also determine it as well. But basically the current is probably a quicker bet. So now that we have our direction be easily determinable, even though we have a um, compass and stuff, we might be like, okay, let's set sail. So what are we gonna do? So we figured out how to determine the direction, whether we have a compass or not, but say we have a compass and we wanna set out, how do we figure out how we're gonna navigate between islands? Because a compass is great for pointing north and determining which way is which, but it doesn't really help us topographically. So, once you get to a different island, and you go to another island, you might be thinking to yourself, Oh, this is easy to navigate back to, until you actually start navigating back, or at least attempting to. Sure would be nice if there was a map that we could pull up, but... This backpack, and the crafting menu, are the only interfaces that we have, other than this compass. Oh, I suppose the watch too, but that doesn't count. But, what if I told you there is a map? That's right, there's a map, and it's actually in the main menu. So what we need to do is save and quit out. So we're back at the main menu, and you might see this uh, cartographer option here and might have bypassed it right away, but you can see it says edit the world you play in. And I was just thinking that initially that was going to just be an island creator, but if you actually open it up and are a little more curious, it'll show this whole layout. So this is your whole game map, generated game map for your seed. Your seed number is up here, and this is the game map. And all of these little spots are the, all, of the, all of the available islands to check out. So a couple of things to point out right away with this. There's a few circles here that are all red. And what those determine are this one right here. There's going to be an island, one island with a red circle around it, no matter what. And that is going to be your starting or and or most recently saved on island. So this is the island I started at and I also saved at it rec most recently. So the red circle is around there. If I were to trek 
if I were to sail up to this island right here and save there, then this red circle would move up to this island. So you definitely want to, if you are in this position where you're ready to start kind of like a full-on base at one of these islands, you definitely want to make a note of which island it's on so you don't lose track of that and you can have a reference point. Other things on here to notice really quick, with the other circles I suppose really quick, is this is going to be a battleship that you need to find and then the three bosses that you're going to have to encounter to beat the game as well. And last but not least, the big elephant in the room, the north facing arrow. So the north facing arrow in the map is offset to face northeast actually, so it's actually quite confusing. So what I've done is I've just taken a screenshot of the game maps that I've been playing and putting it into something like Photoshop, cropping it, rotating it, and then saving it as a new image altogether so the north facing arrow is facing upwards. Cool, so now that we have kind of an idea of the game map and how to use it, let's go back in and I can show you what it mean, what it looks like when this updates. So it looks like from the map here, I want to head over to the west island and even though it looks like it's northeast or whatever, if you're looking at it incorrectly, this is actually just going to be due west of us. So let's go trek there. I can save on that island and then we can jump back in. Okay, we're back on the island and we have our compass and we now know kind of a better layout of the game world now. So what I said in the map menu is that we want to head over to the island west of here. You can see it hanging out right over there between the trees. This old ficus island over there. So we're going to head over there next and we can build the shelter and save. And then we can see how it updates the map from the main menu as well. So a quick tip I have for island hopping, if you're going to do that, is it's nice to kind of keep track of your trajectory of your journey. And I use little markers in order to do that and determine kind of which way I've been going back and forth between islands so I know my pathing. You don't have to do it, but it, it was helping me in early in game before I figured out how to navigate. So what I'll typically do is I'll grab a, law, a stick and I will craft a spear really quick and pull that out because then it's kind of pointing in the direction already. And if I drop it, then it shows me I'm heading out from this island. I'm going to be heading to that island. So uh, the nice thing about this game is that the items dropped will not despawn or at all. So that spear will stay there forever. So if you have an instance where you need to trek across a bunch of islands like we needed to get up to the battleship it would be nice to have a little bit of a marking trail kind of like ribbons in a tree forest trail thingy so <laughs> that's another tip that you can try out as well all right i'm gonna grab this raft and we will head over there and go from there so i highly suggest building a raft sooner than later because it's much quicker with the sail than paddling and if you so happen to lose contact with your raft before you had grabbed that compass out the nice thing is that compasses are pretty abundant in the game throughout loot and whatnot so if you do need to come across another one it's fairly easy just go loot one of the shipwrecks and you should be golden Okay, we've arrived on this island west of our starting island and I need to get in the shade and build a shelter really quick, so I'm going to do that. Alright, and the weather is nice enough to hold out on me. Let's get this shelter built. Boom! Alright, cool. Save. Perfect. All right, let's go check out the map again. Okay, so if we take a look at the cartographer again, you can see that our map has changed with the red circle around the island that we saved at last. So very helpful, especially if you lose your way, you can easily figure out where you're at and conjunction to the rest of the islands and all that stuff. So 
that's pretty much it. Cool, so that is my beginner's guide on how to navigate easily and quickly in Stranded Deep. And shouts to Just Rob Plays for the tip on the Southern Ocean Current. I saw that on one of his shorts, so big ups on that. Thank you for that helpful tip. It was crucial for my first few days of survival on Stranded Deep, so I appreciate that. That's going to do it for this one. So I might have a couple more tips videos, but like I said, I got a 100 days survival video coming up. Oh, we got a crab coming after me. I need to ski that. This thing sucks compared to a refined axe. Oh my goodness. Ooh, hunting up. Okay, like I said, I got a 100 days survival video coming up pretty soon here. I got a couple bosses I got to beat in my main game, and then we're going to finish up the whole campaign of escaping Pacifica. So, if you like this, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so already, so you can check out that 100 Days video when that comes out. Make sure to check out the streams of this on Rumble, because I'm doing that over there. And until next time, sharp out.